Okay, so this week what we're going to do is look at what it means to have a video webcam on your PC, what it means to have so many people around with mobile devices with cameras in them. Uh, how does that change things for librarians? One of the little clips that I've put in this week's post is by Jason Griffey that he presented at the um, Lita Bigwig um, sort of unconference session that was held in the American Libraries Association's conference earlier this year. And in it, he identifies three different um, reasons why librarians should pay attention th to this kind of thing. One is that it's making everything public. And what does that mean about privacy? And what does that mean about our desire to protect our privacy, pa patrons' privacy so much when everybody is putting so much out there? The other thing is, how can we actually use this as librarians in our practice? Um, I'm thinking of the incredibly um, a lot of hoops we used to make people jump through when they wanted to print out. Remember when we had that print station there, we had all these written instructions that people had to follow one after the other. If we could have made a simple little one minute video showing people how to get there, where it was, how to find their job. For some people, people like me who are very visual, it would have been an easier way to understand what to do. The other thing that Jason Griffey re mentions is really interesting is archiving. What does it mean? Stuff like the Mumbai um, unrest that, that happened last week. There were people taking lots and lots of live action uh, videos using their phones, using their video cameras. What does that mean to the historical archive when um, these aren't captured by libraries, when the hands of this, this type of um, creation is in the hands of regular citizens? What does that mean for us as people who are connecting people to the archive, to um, what's going on to find out information. How do we know and how can we use that? What I want to do is go through a couple of things. The first is if you have time, I really would recommend that you take some time out to watch the um, video by the guy who does the um, the Kansas Digio Digital Ethnography um, site. That's Michael Wesh. Uh, he did a presentation at the Library of Congress earlier this year and it was a presentation that he'd worked on with his students and I like the way that in an academic library we can have a look at an example of um, a academic using new web tools with his students and giving over some of the production to them and actually taking the um, place of wise mentor rather than person with all the stuff in their head who can give it over. What the anthropological introduction to YouTube does is it looks at uh, a number of issues to do with what happens when you as somebody with a webcam uploads your videos to YouTube. And this is just talking into the webcam kind of videos. Um, I didn't know particularly, I mean I should have known until I watched this movie that um, YouTube you can actually create your own videos like a little video diary on YouTube. And what, one of the things that they find I find really interesting that they talk about is about the lack of context. I mean, at the moment, I'm sitting here, I'm in my beautiful garden. You can see it's taken us ages and ages, probably eight years to get grapes on our outside pergola, but they're there now. Uh, earlier, there was a plane flying overhead and somebody's mowing their lawn over there. So it's an interesting time to try and record a video. But the point that they make is that it's actually contextless. I'm sending this out, as far as I know, I'm just talking to a little camera on the um, top of my my screen. I don't know who's going to consume it. I don't know how they're going to consume it. And they make the point that this contextless text is quite different to what um, we've been used to when we have a pretty good idea of who our audience is going to be when we create things, or at least haven't had the chance to have it remashed and redistributed in really unusual ways like um, is possible now. Uh, the other things that I want to take you through is just to have a look at the different options for uploading from your camera. Um, one of the things that uh, you might have seen when we did Facebook a couple of weeks ago was that in my LibCat profile I've used the video option in Facebook in order to record video to my profile. So that's one option that you can do. There's something called Quick, which is Q-I-K, which is where people can stream their mobiles. And people frequently do this at conferences, at um, events of um, great significance, like riots, whatever, and before they go out to show how undrunk they are and then to later on show how drunk they are. So it's, a, it's used for a lot of different things. 
YouTube, I find YouTube really actually hard to work out how to upload. There are a few buttons to push and you push one, then you go to another screen and push another. Um, if you upload there though, you're going to get the widest audience. And um, I found out last week that um, Jeff Chan is who did a lot of modifications to the Wii controller to produce a um, white a touch board, an online um, touch board that um, he's actually doing his thesis via YouTube instead of via paper. So that's interesting. Um, Vidler is another source that I'll embed a little clip from Vidler into this post where you just push go and you're there. You're just um, uploading. So people will often use a site like Vidler for what they call video blogging or vlogging where people are actually keeping a record of what they're going doing like they're blogging. Another um, type of service that I want to mention is Seismic. Seismic is a um, like a call and response kind of set, um, setup where you actually do your video and then it goes out into a pool of people who are watching you and they can respond and so they might respond. That happened to me when I was talking about how I was trying to do the 23 things via video at the very start and I had a couple of people saying what's the 23 things, can you tell me more about it and so it was actually and then I recorded a little, a little video to tell them more about it. So again, it's people pushing out all sorts of stuff and calling and responding. Um, one of my favourite little video apps, because I just think it really cuts a lot of the rubbish that people could say, is something called 12seconds.tv. With 12seconds.tv, they believe that if you're taking more than 12 seconds to say something, like I am at the moment, you're talking rubbish. You should be able to say what you need to say in 12 seconds. So it's just 12 second snaps of people's lives, which I, I, I find really interesting. It, it's pithy, it tends not to be talking heads. People will start with a shot of something really interesting like a mug that they've got or some shoes or something like that and then they'll move into what they've got to say or they'll just show a sign or something like that. So it's um, people are finding their own literacy and their own way of expressing themselves with 12 second TV, which is very interesting. Um, now, what this um, session is, nominally about I guess is Ustream.tv. I like Ustream because it's a free service. Um, you can do similar things with something called Stickam, S-T-I-C-K-A-M, or you can do um, a similar thing with um, products that you pay money for, like we have Wimber Classroom, which used to be Live Classroom here at Murdoch. You also might have heard something called Illuminate, where you can do video, audio, you can drop slides in, you can have chat, all sorts of bits and pieces happening for this live conferencing facility. Ustream, however, is free and it tends to be like a broadcast channel. Um, I have somebody in the Eastern States, an ex-ABC broadcaster called Stilgarian, who every um, week does Stilgarian Live. And there's a whole mob of us that get there and we watch him and he's like our fireside. So we'll log in and we'll be able to log into the chat room and we'll be chatting about what he's saying, asking him questions, but he'll be the one who's, um, who's talking. Uh, you stream, you broadcast, and there's the chat room. So they're the main things that you can do on Ustream. We'll have some a play with Ustream in the um, workshop, and if you're not able to make it to the workshop, I can give you the address that you can click on and the time you can click on, and if all goes well, we should be broadcasting via Ustream at the time. Um, just two other things that you might want to make note of. One is that Skype allows video and so people may often make video calls using Skype and Gmail via um, their chat client within Gmail now also allows video calls. So as you can see um, video is having a wide application. I think there's a lot of questions being raised about it that as librarians we do need to know about. Um, I leave it to you to experiment with and to have a bit of thinking about and hopefully I'll see you in our Ustream session. Okay, in the meantime I'm going to go pick up my kids from school.